In this video, we'll discuss installing the flight controller on our racing drone. As a reminder, this video accompanies our text guide on PropWash.com that you can use to follow the process step by step with pictures. Now that we have our PDB, ESCs, and motors installed, we can start connecting everything to the flight controller. The flight controller functions as the brain of our quadcopter. Eventually, we'll hook it up to our PC so that we can install and customize all the settings to make our drone fly. If you want to read more about the technical details on flight controllers, you can check out our guide on PropWash.com. Assembling the flight controller can be daunting to new pilots, so we wanted to break this process into easy to understand parts. First, we want to get to know our flight controller and identify which parts of the board we're going to use for our build. Second, we want to connect all our components to the correct positions on the board. There are a few ways to do this, which we'll discuss in more detail later in the video. Third, we want to provide power to the flight controller, either via the PDB or using a direct connection to the battery. And finally, fourth, we want to mount the flight controller and make sure everything fits correctly. So as we mentioned, our first step will be to identify which parts of the flight controller we're going to use for our build. On screen, you'll see a simple wiring diagram. This covers the fundamentals of what we're wiring to the flight controller. The solid lines are required, while the dotted lines are optional. As you can see, we're going to utilize the signal wires that are already attached to our ESCs, connect the flight controller to the PDB, and connect the RC receiver to our flight controller. So for the required connections that we need to make, there are three fundamental types. The power connection will use a power and ground wire so that our flight controller can get power. Most flight controllers run off 5 volt power provided by the PDB, however some can handle a direct battery connection. PWM connections are used mainly to allow our flight controller to communicate with our ESCs. Each ESC needs to be connected to the flight controller with one signal wire, usually colored white or yellow, and one ground wire, usually colored black. PWM connections will often have a red power wire, which rarely needs to be connected. UART connections are kind of like a USB port for our flight controller. It's a standardized communication protocol which allows us to plug in peripheral devices to add functionality to our quadcopter. Some devices that connect to the UART port, like the RC receiver, are required for flight. Others, like GPS, telemetry, or an OSD, are simply nice to have. UART ports will have four connection points, power, ground, TX, or transmit, and RX, or receive. For the most part, you'll only need to hook up either RX or TX rather than both. Think of it this way. If you want to receive data to the flight controller, like receiving input from the RC receiver, you would use the RX connection. Now the cool thing about flight controllers is that they can be used for a ton of different flying setups. The downside is that first time builders may be a little intimidated by all the pin slots and connections on the board. Here's the good news. We won't be using all the wires or sockets on the flight controller for the quadcopter that we'll be building. That means it's totally okay to have a ton of extra wire and components that may have come with your flight controller left over at the end of the build. The bad news, or I guess tedious news, is that you'll need to identify what goes where on your flight controller. Now for this video we're using an SP Racing F3 flight controller, but the process that we undertake here will be similar for all flight controllers. However, the layout may be different. No matter what flight controller you end up using, you should always consult the manual and understand what each connection is used for before attaching anything. We recommend taking time here to prepare your build in order to make hooking everything up relatively painless. Drawing out your own diagram and labeling everything can make the assembly process a breeze. Okay, so on to our second step. We want to solder connection points onto the flight controller and prepare wires to connect all the components together. We're going to use pin headers to create connection points on each of the sockets we plan to hook equipment onto. This will make connecting everything extremely simple and make for easy repairs down the road if we need to swap out broken components. However, as we mentioned before, there are many ways to connect everything to your flight controller. You can also solder wires directly to the board, use pre-built connectors to hook everything up, or a mixture of any of these. It's really going to depend on your frame, what materials you have available, and your plans for upgrades and repairs. We're showing the pin header method in this video as we feel it's very friendly for beginners and allows for easy access to all the components. To do this, you're going to need various pin headers. Now for the most part, your flight controller probably came with a selection of headers. If not, you can check out our flight controller buyer's guide in the description for more options. You're going to want some straight pin headers and some 90 degree pin headers. We like using the 90 degree pin headers for our ESCs and the straight headers for our UART connections. However, this is really going to depend on how you laid out your build. Depending on your frame and the length of wire you have, you may want to choose one over the other and that's totally fine. 
These are just connectors and as long as everything fits, you can use whatever works best for you. Another consideration to make before soldering everything together is to correctly position your flight controller on your frame. All flight controllers on the market should have some sort of arrow or indication of where the board should be facing on the quad. You want the arrow pointed towards the front of your quadcopter. We recommend placing it on your standoffs first and measuring where everything needs to go before soldering in the pin headers. This can help ensure that everything is laid out correctly and reaches the connection points without adjusting the wire lengths. If you have that arrow on your flight controller pointed anywhere but the front of your quad, you're going to have a really bad time on your first flight. So make sure to double check the positioning before assembling anything else. So now that you have everything positioned correctly and you diagrammed out where everything should go, it's time to solder on the pin headers. This is a very easy process. Simply cut however many pins you'll need, push the short end of the pins through the sockets on the flight controller, hold them in place using helping hands or something similar, and apply solder to bind the pins to the board. Make sure to solder each pin to the board. You only need to solder the pins that connect to the board. Don't accidentally solder the pieces sticking out of the board that we'll use to connect to our other components. If you haven't done this kind of soldering before or need some practice exercises, check out our soldering video guide for some tips and tricks for soldering. Of course, there's a link in the description for this video. For our purposes, we're gonna solder in five 90 degree pins into the PWM sockets, Use straight pin headers for the two four pin UART sockets and two straight pins for the boot headers. Now you may be wondering why we're using five pins for the PWM sockets as we mentioned before that we're using these connections mainly for the ESCs. Simple math says that there are four ESCs so there should be four pins, right? Well the reason here is that we need to connect power directly from the PDB to the flight controller. To do this, we'll connect one of our cables to the power and ground pins on that fifth pin header to the PDB. The boot pins, on the other hand, are there just to make our lives easier if we ever need to use the bootloader. You won't connect anything to these pins, just leave them alone for now. Once you have all the pins assembled and soldered to the board, we can build the wires to hook everything together. Building wires may sound strange, but it will make a little more sense when we get into it. We're going to be using servo extension wires to connect our components together. These servo extension cables have three wires, a red power wire, a black ground wire, and a white, or sometimes yellow, signal wire. From these wires, we can make all the combinations we need for our connections. In our case, we're going to need a power wire to connect the PDB to the flight controller, as well as wiring to connect our RC receiver to the flight controller. For our power line to the PDB, we'll remove the white wire from one of our servo cables and just use the black and red wires. This is easy. Simply snip the wire to the length that you need and cut the remainder of the white wire away. To really clean everything up, you can also break the pad on the connector to release the rest of the white wire. This will leave you with a red and black wire that you can solder to a 5 volt pad on the PDB with a pin connector on the opposite side you can connect to our installed pin headers on the flight controller. Similarly, if you need to change the cable ordering or just want to save money on using multiple servo cables, you can also carefully cut between the wires to separate the signal wire from the power wires. Again, this is up to you and how you want to organize your wiring. So for our build, we made the power wire, used a full servo cable with slightly different ordering for the RC receiver, and a single signal wire for the telemetry from the receiver to the flight controller. Our ESCs already have their wires set up, so we just need to eventually connect them to the flight controller. Again, most flight controller setups will be similar. Just use your manual to figure out which connections are needed and build and wire the cables accordingly. Now that we have all of our wires built, our final step before hooking everything up is to solder the power wire that we built to the PDB. This will allow us to power the flight controller. We'll solder this wire following the same steps from our PDB build video. Just like we did before, strip a tiny bit of the silicon covering away with your fingers, tin the wire, and solder it to the board. We solder this connection inward or facing the interior of the quadcopter to prevent any wire hanging outside the quadcopter where it could get cut by a propeller. As an optional step, if you want battery voltage telemetry, you can solder that cable in place now. Find open battery voltage pads on your PDB and solder the VBAT cable that came with your flight controller to the board. As always, be sure to wire any power cables to the correct terminals. You can then hook that cable onto the flight controller. With your power lead soldered, we should just be left with connections that will fit nicely onto our pin headers. So let's hook everything up. Use the diagram that you put together earlier to connect everything to the correct pins. The one tricky connection is ensuring that the motors are in the correct order. 
I overlaid the Betaflight motor ordering for your reference on screen. Basically, you want to take the connections from each ESC from the connected motor and plug them in the correct order on your flight controller. In our case, the first PWM pin would connect to motor 1, the second pin to motor 2, and so on. Make sure that the order is correct starting from the rear right motor, which would be motor 1. Also, make sure that you connect to the correct pins. Use the labeling on the flight controller to ensure that the wire ordering is correct. Remember, red to positive, black to negative, and signal wire, be it white or yellow, to the signal connection. Once everything's connected, you're all done. At this point, we can make sure all the wires are routed correctly and out of range of the propellers. Similarly, we can check to make sure that everything fits correctly before we begin our final cleanup steps. At this point, we have a close to finished quad. Next up, we're going to install the final odds and ends so that we have a quad that can be flown line of sight. After that, we'll install the FPV system and be done. We'll see you there.